Good morning and uh, shalom, everyone. Uh, welcome to class. Thank you for uh, joining class, all our in-person students and also uh, Ravili, our online student. Thank you for joining class. Also, uh, a warm welcome to our e-learning students who will be listening to these lectures uh, uh, later on. We'll uh, begin our class today. So before we do so, we have uh, Nina Santosh who's celebrating her birthday. So happy birthday, Nina. Have a blessed year. Trust that you would uh, uh, you know, enjoy this day and be blessed that the favor of God will rest upon you in, and that uh, he will prosper the work of your hands and uh, everything that you desire that uh, you will see uh, come into fulfillment this year, even as you decree and speak God's promises over the various areas of your life where you want to see uh, breakthrough, where you want to see uh, his promises come true, where you want to see deliverance, where you want to see healing, restoration. And also we pray that uh, the fullness of the Godhead you know, that has been given to you will be manifested in every area of your life. So have a blessed year, Nina, and such a joy to know you and such a blessing to uh, uh, be part of your life. And thank you for being a blessing. Uh, so can somebody lead us in prayer, please? Uh, can somebody lead us in prayer, praying for our class today and also for uh, Nina? Can I ask Nina John to pray for... Uh, Nina Santosh and also for our class today. Yes, uh, Pastor. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. And Father God, we thank you. We, we bless you for this day, Lord. We will. Uh, Nina, sorry to interrupt. I asked Nina John to pray for the class and to also pray for you. Oh, okay. Is that fine? Okay. Go ahead, Nina John. Gracious, loving Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this day and for giving us this time to come once again to your presence, uh, to spend time with you and learning from you, Lord. Thank you for all uh, the inputs we were able to learn as far as the kingdom and uh, uh, the perspective and the thinking and the culture. We pray and ask, Lord, in the days to come, that we would really be able to apply these things that we have learned, Lord, and really be representatives of your kingdom in every sense of the word, Lord, in our thinking, in our culture, in our actions as well. Now, this time, Lord, we especially bring uh, to you, Lord, Nina Santosh, even as she celebrates her birthday. We thank you, Lord, for the year that has gone by and we thank you for the beginning of the new year as well we pray lord uh, for your hand of blessing protection and guidance to be upon her in a special way we pray that she would really delight in you lord so that you would fulfill all the desires of her heart and even as she seeks you and learns from you lord we pray here at, at class and at her home and with the different people that she comes into contact with. She would really be the salt and the light, Lord, and be able to draw many people to you because of her life and testimony, Lord. Thank you once again. We believe, Lord, that you will grant her many more blessed years to serve you and to be fruitful in your kingdom. Thanking you once again for this day and time. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Nina John. Uh, today we look at chapters 10 and 11, the last two chapters in this uh, publication, uh, The Kingdom of God. Um, so chapter 10, we will be uh, studying about the literal kingdom. Uh, we already have uh, studied and in chapter 1 we have already seen that, you know, God had a plan to have a kingdom uh, with uh, people who would be heirs with him uh, in that kingdom here on the earth. And um, 
we see that, you know, this kingdom that he has planned was something that he initiated, that he brought about, was a spiritual kingdom. And this kingdom will eventually have its fulfillment when Christ, who is the king of this kingdom, will come and usher in the physical kingdom here on the earth. So all of what we have been studying from chapter 1 to chapter 9, we've been looking at the spiritual dimension or you know, the spirit, sp spiritual aspect um, of the kingdom of God. Uh, and in chapter 10, we will be looking at the physical kingdom, which is a literal kingdom which Jesus will come uh, and uh, during his second coming, he will come and, uh, you know, he will establish his, um, the literal kingdom here on the earth and he will rule and reign. And we, his saints or his believers, those who believe in him, you know, we will be people who will be ruling and reigning in that millennium kingdom, um, which he will establish here on the earth. So we're going to be studying about the literal kingdom and, um, uh, I'm not going to go into much of detail because you will be uh, studying eschatology as a whole subject, as a whole course uh, 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 during one of these years. I don't know if you've already completed studying about eschatology, the, the end times. Have you already studied that course or you still yet to study that course? You haven't yet studied? Yes, no? Can I have some responses? Okay, uh, you okay? No, so you will be studying that. Um, that will be a course that you would go through in detail. So I'm not going to look at uh, things in detail here. We'll just uh, look at it in the in the aspect of the kingdom of God that He will come, that Jesus will come to um, establish. Okay, so we see that God's uh, God had an original plan even before the foundation of the world. His original plan was to have a kingdom uh, with people who would be heirs with him in that kingdom here on the earth. Okay, and we know that Jesus is going to come and, um, um, you know, eventually um, have or establish the physical aspect or the physical dimension of this kingdom here on the um, earth. And so how can we say that Jesus himself is going to come and establish uh, this, this physical kingdom here on the earth, the kingdom of God here on the earth. We look at um, various prophecies. We look at the prophecy in 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 from Genesis um, uh, through uh, the Old Testament books, uh, right up to uh, Isaiah, Daniel, Jeremiah, and also we will look at um, uh, you know the the prophecy or the angelic announcement in. Uh, the, uh, the the gospel of Luke and what Jesus teaches about his literal kingdom uh, when he was here on the earth and how he gives a purview of uh, the coming kingdom to his disciples and um, what are the signs of this coming kingdom and how Jesus uh, came to establish the spiritual kingdom and how he will come later on to establish the physical kingdom. And then we will look at, um, you know, um, uh, the 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 end times. Uh, what uh, just very briefly? What are the signs of the end times, and how we as saints shall possess uh, the kingdom, the the literal kingdom? Okay. So we look at the prophecies that concerns the the king of this kingdom, the literal kingdom, the physical kingdom that God will establish here on the earth. Who is going to be the king? And we know that it's uh, Jesus. So how do we know it is Jesus? So we look at certain prophecies uh, right uh, in the very beginning in Genesis chapter 49 verse 10 we have a prophecy there so can somebody please read genesis chapter 49 verse 10 please genesis chapter 49 verse 10 the scepter shall not depart from judah nor a lawgiver from between his feet until shiloh comes and to him shall be the obedience of the people Amen. So here, uh, the, uh, as early as in the book of Genesis, we have the prophecy of uh, uh, Jesus being the ruler, the lawgiver, uh, 
uh, and Shiloh. Shiloh means basically, you know, peacemaker or the prince of peace. And if we look at the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 9, where he says, you know, he would be the wonderful counselor, uh, the mighty God, uh, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. So it's talking about the son that will be born and he is a prince of peace. So this prophecy is talking about Jesus Christ. And also we know that Jesus came from the tribe of um, Judah. Okay, so uh, this prophecy explicitly foretells the coming of a, a particular individual who is a Christ. And uh, in the Old Testament times, we know that Shiloh was a city where the tabernacle was set up. We read about this in Joshua chapter 18, verse 1. And the city was later on destroyed. We read about this in Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 12 to 14. <coughs> And ancient Jewish scholars explain that uh, Shiloh, uh, the word that is compounded from shell and lo, meaning to whom it belongs. Okay. Therefore, the sentence that you know we read here in Genesis chapter forty-nine, verse ten, says, "The scepter shall not, the scepter shall not depart from Judah." until the one who comes to whom it belongs because the word shiloh shell and lo meaning to whom it belongs so the scepter shall not depart from judah until the one uh, comes to whom it belongs so who it belongs to it belongs to the king of this kingdom who is jesus christ and the uh, uh, and the scepter shall not depart means you know that God would have a king who will rule, will continue to rule um, Israel and will have somebody sit on the throne as we will look at the prophecies and will ultimately come uh, the everlasting king uh, who is Jesus Christ and his kingdom which is everlasting and never end, which is eternal. Okay, so there's also we see that Jesus came from the tribe of the royal tribe of Judah. We read about this in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. I'm not going to be reading all of these because of the lack of time, but I'm just mentioning the references. You can take it down and you can read it later. Okay, so there is also here we see an element of prophecy referring to Christ's second coming, which says, uh, To him shall the obedience of the people be because when he establishes the literal physical kingdom you know the uh, god will rule and reign and uh, you know it will be um, uh, you know um, people will live in total submission surrender and in total obedience to the king of the kingdom that is uh, jesus christ okay so that is the first prophecy we'll be looking at and also there is uh, the literal kingdom that is foretold in various prophecies in the old testament uh, if we look at second samuel chapter 7 um, specifically verse 13 it says uh, god uh, promises that he will establish a throne of his kingdom forever okay and we know that um, you know um after um, King Jehoiakim, uh, who was taken as a captive uh, in the Babylonian captivity, there was no king that ruled over uh, Israel because they were all taken into captivity. And um, the last king was King Jehoiakim, and there was a pause after that. But then we come into the New Testament where we see the announcement of uh, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ and how he will reign in the house of Jacob uh, forever. We look at that prophecy as well. But here, if you look at uh, this prophecy here in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse uh, 13, it says, the throne of his kingdom will be forever, which means that, you know, um, as of now, there is no king uh, or after King Jehoiakim, there was no king that was ruling uh, Israel, but it says his kingdom will be forever, which means Jesus will come, establish his kingdom forever here on the earth, and he will rule uh, forever. Okay. And verse 16, the last phrase says, Your throne shall be established for ever so his kingdom is forever and the throne and the the king who sits on the throne will be for uh, ever look at uh, the prophecy in isaiah chapter 16 verse 5 it says you know uh, the one will sit on it in 
truth. If you look at uh, the one there, it's a capital O, uh, which means it's referring to God. If it's referring to a human being, it will be a small O. But the, uh, the one here is talking about the king of this kingdom that is talking about God, that's talking about Jesus Christ. And look at what it says there. It says, in the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking justice and hastening um, righteousness. If you look at um, various other prophecies concerning uh, Jesus Christ, you know, it talks about how he is the, the righteous judge uh, and also a judge who seeks justice and who will bring about righteousness. Because in the literal kingdom that Jesus will establish here on earth, it will be uh, a kingdom where there is, uh, you know, there is, there will be truth, there will be righteousness, because that is the foundation of God's throne of His kingdom. Uh, there will be, um, a, 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 there will be justice there. Um, and we will see everything that, uh, you know, in perfection and in beauty and in order because God himself will be ruling his literal physical kingdom here on the earth. Uh, the prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 33 verses 14 uh, to 18, um, it's, look at verse um, 17. It says, for thus says the Lord. Can somebody read that, please? Um, verse 17 of Jeremiah chapter 13. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 17. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. Amen. Sorry, it was Jeremiah chapter 33. So it says, uh, God says, and he promises that David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. Okay, so there would uh, there would always be a king who will rule over Israel, and we know that you know when Jesus comes, he will uh, establish his literal physical kingdom there in uh, Jerusalem. So we see that God made a covenant with David that one of his descendants will have a kingdom that will last for ever okay uh, we also know the prophecy in daniel chapter 9 verses 6 and 7 it's a prophecy that we are all very familiar with because we uh, hear it over and over being read to us um, during uh, christmas time but um, we know that you know a child will be born and the government will be on his shoulders and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace and it says of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end and upon the throne of david and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from this time forward even forever more okay so we see that here again that you know even as jesus will come to establish his uh, even as he came to establish the spiritual dimension of, or the spiritual aspect of the kingdom of God, he will come later on to establish the little physical kingdom and he will establish it with judgment and justice. So there will be justice, there will be righteousness, there will be a, a king who will judge and who will bring fair, righteous and just uh, judgment here on the earth. Okay, uh, we'll look at the prophecy in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Can one of you read Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, please? Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. And in the days of these kings of the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Amen. So we know that when Jesus comes a second time, he will overthrow all uh, the kings and the kingdoms on the earth, all the rulers of the kings uh, and their kingdoms here on earth. He will also overthrow Satan and his forces, and he will establish or he will set up his kingdom, and his kingdom that he sets up will never be destroyed. And it's a kingdom that is everlasting, a kingdom that will, uh, will uh, is forever and ever, and it shall stand for 
ever. So that is the prophecy that is foretold by uh, Daniel. And we know that, you know, even though God had promised that there would be um, a, a, a person who will sit on the throne of David forever, but there was a temporary pause. We read about this in uh, Jeremiah chapter 36, verse 30, where, um, you know, um, uh, it says that, you know, concerning King Jehoiakim, king of Judah, it says, he shall have no one to sit on the throne of David and his dead body shall be cast out uh, in the heat of the day and the frost of the night. So we know that the lineage of kings uh, in the line of um, kings that, came, that ruled over Judah, you know, there was a temporary pause when King Nebuchadnezzar came and um, uh, defeated um, Judah and took everybody as uh, captives back to Babylon and King Jehoiakim was put to death and there was no king who ruled after that in, uh, in Israel or in Judah um, and hence there was no king uh, who was seated on the throne. But um, uh, even though there was a temporary pause, we come to the New Testament where we read in uh, Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 33, where the angel announces um, to Mary and tells her that, you know, she has found favor with God and that she is going to, um, uh, you know, uh, bring forth a son. And we look at what the angel tells her in Luke chapter 1, verses 30 to 33. So can one of you please read that? Nobody wants to read? Ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Luke chapter 1, verse 32-33. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 30 to 33, please. Yes, ma'am. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid. Mary, you have found favor with God. You will, you will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of the Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Prince. Uh, please can you keep passing the mic quickly so others also get a turn to read. And so when we have to read a, a scripture passage, you know, all of you will be ready and quick to read. Thank you. So here we see that the angel announced uh, that Jesus was the one who would sit on the throne of David and he will rule forever. His kingdom is everlasting and his kingdom will uh, be from eternity to eternity. There will be no end. And we see that he introduced the spiritual dimension of that eternal kingdom when Jesus came on the earth, when he was born here on the earth and then he did his ministry for, for three years. Okay, so he introduced a spiritual dimension of his kingdom, but we know that he's coming again and he will fulfill, uh, you know, what he has promised that he will establish his little kingdom here on the earth. Okay, so when Jesus was here on the earth, he also thought about this literal kingdom. Uh, he also gave his uh, disciples a purview of the coming of the kingdom. He also spoke about the signs of this coming kingdom. And we also see how he um, brought about the establishment of uh, this kingdom of uh, God. So we look at uh, what Jesus thought on about the literal aspect of the kingdom that he is going to establish. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. Can one of you read that, please? Matthew chapter 8, verse 11, 12. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Thank you, Sri Radha. So, um, you know, here it's uh, talking about many will come from east and west. It's referring uh, to the Gentiles. Um, 
and you know because the gentiles had such faith in them caused jesus to announce that you know uh, that uh, the gentile rules, gentiles will also be part of the kingdom of heaven and they will also even sit down to dinner with abraham isaac and uh, jacob now what jesus said was something very radical this was a radical idea to many of the jews uh, or the jewish people in jesus's time because they uh, assumed that this great messianic banquet uh that they would have would have no gentiles that it will only be all jews would be there but uh jesus is correcting their um you know uh their uh, mis their understanding their mistaken identity or their mistaken ideas or uh, their understanding about this messianic uh banquet and he says that you know uh in this messianic a banquet there will be many gentiles because the jews have basically uh, rejected uh, the messiah they have rejected the truth they have rejected the gospel that is in jesus christ so these jewish uh, religious leaders are those who are the ones who rejected the message and so you know um, he says that uh, but the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness so who are the sons of the kingdom he is referring to the jews and he says they will be cast out into hell because you know uh, they have uh, rejected the truth they have refused to accept um, uh, jesus as the messiah and the gospel of truth that is in jesus christ okay so here we see that jesus is uh, saying that even the gentiles will be part of um, the kingdom of heaven okay another parable that jesus talks about in matthew chapter 22 verses 1 uh, to 15 here we see that you know in this parable jesus says again he bring, begins this parable like any other parable says a kingdom of heaven is like you know so a king who uh, arranges a marriage for his son and he sends out uh, his servants to invite you know um Um, um, um the people uh, to come because he has prepared this great dinner banquet and he is inviting them uh, but we see that uh, you know uh, and he's referring to the jews so they they uh, you know they the prophets were sent to them they had the kings they had the judges um uh, they they were given the laws the covenants the the commands everything but they rejected the messiah they rejected god they rejected uh, the gospel and what did they do when they heard that you know uh, the when the servants came and invited them uh, you know they they seized them and they killed them okay so it's basically talking about the prophets who went to the jews and you know uh, delivered the messiah uh, the the truth about the coming of the messiah but they refused to accept them they killed them and so we see that uh, the king was very furious was very angry so he sent his servants to those um, you know who were uh, 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 to those who were invited who were, he says go to the highways and uh, as many as you find you know just on the way the the normal people the local people just invite them for the wedding so he's talking here and uh, referring here to the gentiles so he says that you know uh, the parable says that they went out and they invited all those who are in the highways and gathered them together uh, all whom they found good and bad and the wedding hall was filled with guests okay but interesting to note what it says in uh, verses 11 to verse 415 can one of you please read that uh, matthew chapter 22 verses 11 to 15 please matthew 22 11 to 15 what when the king came and to see the guests he saw a man there who did not have on a bedding garment so he said to him friend how did you come in here without a wedding garment and he was speechless then the king said to the servants bind him hand and foot take him away and cast him into outer darkness there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen then the pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk amen so here we see that you know in the literal kingdom uh you know we see that uh, you know the it's it's not only the jews who were 
initially were given this kingdom to be released here on the earth they had uh, the they had the opportunity they had the responsibility they had the privilege but when they rejected it uh, it was then you know um, uh, you know the invitation was sent out to the gentiles and they were invited and so they would also be part of the kingdom of um, heaven and so here in verse 13 it's and 14 it says a man who enters without you know the man who was not dressed in his attire or his wedding uh, garment we see that you know uh, he was taken out and thrown into the uh, darkness which means you know those who um, uh, who have um, have whom the gospel has gone out to you know and have uh, the, uh, the gospel has gone out to but they have not received the gospel in its fullest sense uh, they have not been clothed with the required righteousness which means they have just uh, heard the gospel that they have not accepted uh, Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior or they have not uh, have been uh, uh, you know made righteous or being justified in God's sight you know um, or they have not responded appropriately uh, to the gospel message that was preached to them you know um, or their lives have not been aligned uh, to the values of the kingdom you know they will not be allowed to enter into the kingdom of heaven but they will be thrown into you know uh, 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 darkness where they'll be weeping and gnashing basically talking about hell so Yes, there would be uh, this great wedding banquet where it's not only going to be the Jews, but also the Gentiles are going to be part of the kingdom of heaven. But there would also be those who, you know, who uh, have heard the gospel, who kind of, uh, you know, are not made a decision. They're not here and they're not there. Uh, they fool themselves or they assume for themselves that, you know, we are Christians or we are believers, but in totality, they have not been uh, made justified or been made righteous in God's sight because of their response. They have not wholeheartedly or fullheartedly given themselves to um, uh, to the calling or to the uh, uh, to the covenant that Jesus has made on the cross, the new covenant, they have not responded appropriately. They, they have not aligned themselves to the kingdom values or what God requires of them. And such people would also be thrown into the, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, into darkness uh, uh, which is hell so here he's referring again to the jews because you know uh, they they pretend to have a, a righteousness by keeping the law but you know uh, and keeping all of those rituals it's just an outward show but you know jesus says that's uh, uh, that's of no use because uh, the law is not going to make you righteous keeping the laws and keeping the rituals and uh, you know trying to follow some set of uh, uh, man-made rules and rituals which they think is important is not what is going to get them into the kingdom of heaven but it's their heart response you know fully accepting uh, the gospel that is in Jesus Christ, uh, who is the Lord and their uh, Savior. So we see that, uh, you know, Jesus teaching here on the little aspect of the kingdom, uh, where he says that, you know, many from the non-Jewish world will be part of this eternal kingdom that he's going to establish. And the very ones that uh, through whom he wanted to release his kingdom here on the earth, the Jews, you know, because they rejected him, they will be cast out. Okay. We also see that Jesus not only taught about the literal aspect of the kingdom of God, we also see that he gives them a preview of the coming kingdom. Look at what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 28. So can one of you please read Matthew chapter 16, verse 28, please? Matthew 16, 28. Assuredly, I say to you, there were some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Amen. So here Jesus is saying that there are some standing here, you know, he's referring maybe to his disciples, 
uh, who will not taste that they see the son of man coming in his kingdom now we know that it it uh, you know jesus the second coming did not happen uh, literally when you know he was here the first time on here on the earth but in the second coming he will establish the little kingdom so then was jesus lying when he said that you know there are some standing here who shall not taste death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom uh, no he was basically referring to um, you know a, 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 a purview of the coming kingdom that his disciples will for see for taste would uh, have an experience and encounter with and that was uh, during the transfiguration which we read in Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 to um, 8 okay so uh, in his transfiguration you know he gave some of his disciples a purview of the glory of his coming kingdom okay so he prepared them by saying that that you know um, some of them will not die until the, they saw the power of the kingdom of god and the son of man in that kingdom so you know uh, 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 at the on the mount of um, transfiguration you know they had a taste or a glimpse or a purview of uh, uh, what jesus would look like in his glorified st state you know bright radiant and um, also uh, uh, as what john describes of him in the book of uh, uh, revelation so we see that uh, his disciples even though they were not there they were uh, you know uh, of course they were not there to see the literal or the physical aspect of the kingdom of god but uh, jesus did uh, you know get them to have a purview or foretaste of what that little kingdom would be and how the king of this kingdom would be in his glorified um uh, you know, um, uh, transformed, glorious, uh, 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 radiant um, uh, uh, stature or his, you know, his being that he will be when he comes in his literal kingdom, okay? Now we look at some of the signs of the coming of the kingdom. We're not going to look at uh, everything in detail. Um, Luke chapter 21, uh, you know, Jesus uh, mentions the signs but he's, uh, one important thing that we would like to emphasize here is those who look at uh, the signs of the coming of the kingdom, the little aspect of the kingdom of God, you know, um, they, they, will, they would also be the generation who will see um, the coming of the kingdom of God. So they, the generation that sees the signs that are uh, presented in uh, scripture also presented what Jesus presents in Luke chapter 21 will be the same generation who would also see the Son of Man coming down the second time and establishing his literal um, kingdom. Okay, so uh, that's what Jesus talks about in Luke chapter 21, verses uh, 27 uh, to 32. So, can somebody read that, please? Luke chapter 21, 27 to 32. Luke chapter 21 verse 27 to 32. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Then he spoke to them a parable, look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they already build, when they are already budding, you see and know for yourselves that summer is now near. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by now no means pass away till all, till all things take place. Amen. Thank you, Anand. So here he says that, you know, when you look at the fig tree or all the other trees and it's budding, what what is the... Uh, signs it's it's showing you that you know that summer is fast uh, approaching or summer is very near so he's saying that the generation that sees the signs will also see you know uh, the coming of the son of man and the, the his little uh, the his kingdom being established here on the earth okay so we see that you know when jesus came on the earth and uh, he established the the spiritual aspect the uh, spiritual dimension um, of the kingdom of god and um, and he knew that he could only establish 
uh, it after he had fulfilled the reason for which he came, that is to redeem all of mankind. Only when this was completed, uh, could he, you know, um, uh, could he have a people who would inherit that kingdom and administer that kingdom here on the earth. So uh, Jesus came not only to announce and to, uh, uh, you know, initiate or to bring about the spiritual aspect of the kingdom, but he also came to fulfill um, the mission to redeem the people who would inherit the kingdom and administer that kingdom here on the earth. And without him doing that, you know, we cannot be people who would, uh, you know, even be part of the spiritual dimension of the kingdom of God here on earth, leave alone the, the literal physical kingdom that he is going to come to establish later on. Um, so we also see that, you know, um, Another aspect of um, uh, the coming of the kingdom of God is, uh, you know, when we celebrate the Lord's table, it's our expression of our faith in the coming uh, kingdom. Okay, and that is what Jesus speaks about in Matthew chapter 26, verse 29, and Luke chapter 22, uh, verses 16, 18, 29, and 30. So can one of you read that, please? Matthew chapter 26, verse 29. Anyone reading that? Matthew chapter 26, verse 29. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Go ahead with Luke 22 also, please. Luke uh, verse 22, chapter 22. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the wine until the kingdom of God comes. Verse 29. And I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my father bestowed one upon me. Verse 30. That you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Amen. So here it's talking about, uh, you know, the Lord's table, communion, celebration of the Lord's table, uh, which is our expression of our faith, you know, of the coming kingdom that Jesus is going to come and um, establish. So he promises us that, you know, he will drink uh, it with us once again in that kingdom. Okay. So we know that Jesus established or uh, he brought up, uh, he had uh, communion with his uh, disciples, but he says he promises them that he will drink again with us once again in that kingdom. So, uh, our uh, partaking in the Lord's table is an expression of our faith that you know that we shall rule and reign with him in his uh, kingdom because it says here that you know. Um, uh, I will bestow upon you a kingdom and that you may eat and drink at my table, my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of um, Israel. So, you know, he will bestow upon us a kingdom uh, just as his father has bestowed on him a kingdom and that, uh, you know, uh, our partaking in the Lord's table is also expression of our faith that we shall rule and reign with him in his uh, kingdom. So each time we partake in the Lord's table, we are declaring that, you know, throughout all eternity, you know, uh, we would uh, reign with him forevermore and we will be singing his uh, praises. So as believers, you know, uh, even though we go through struggles and challenges and pain and suffering, you know, we live with this blessed hope that um, even though we are experiencing in part um, uh, the, uh, the eternal life that uh, we have received uh, because we have accepted Jesus Christ, that we would also, you know, uh, experience in full. We will realize it in full when uh, we meet him face to face and when we are part of his uh, kingdom. So, you know, we have this blessed hope uh, for place in his heavenly kingdom where we would um, 
be with the king and where we will rule and reign along with um, him okay now just before jesus uh, ascended back to uh, heaven went back to the father we see that his disciples were uh, a little confused they had not fully understood uh, the two phases of the coming of uh, the king and his kingdom um, you know we know in the first phase when jesus came he introduced the spiritual aspect of the kingdom um, and you know he was going to come again to establish the physical or the literal aspect of his uh, kingdom but you know the the disciples were disappointed because they had not um, you know seen the physical aspect of the kingdom so in acts chapter 1 verses 6 to 8 we read and uh, when the disciples asked jesus lord will you at this time restore the kingdom of israel so you know they they're looking for a physical king who will come and rule and you know um, overthrow all of their enemies and establish uh, the kingdom of israel uh, 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 forever and so they ask him will you not you know establish or restore the king uh, kingdom of uh, uh, Israel and look at what um, uh, Jesus tells them you know Jesus tells them that uh, you know you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea Samaria and to the ends of the um, earth so he's telling them you know this is not the mission that i came for now to as uh, to to establish the literal uh, physical kingdom here on earth and to rule and reign now but he pointed them to a totally different mission and that mission is to proclaim the kingdom of god uh, and to proclaim it with the power of the holy spirit and to proclaim it to the whole world so you know um, the time that we are in this is our kingdom mandate this is the mandate or present mandate that uh, god has given to us that you know um yeah, he we are to uh, establish the spiritual um, aspect or dimension of his kingdom here on the earth so that you know people can be part of his literal physical kingdom when he comes to establish it uh, later on during his second coming okay so we see that you know um, jesus told this to his disciples he gave them a new mission and he went back to the father he ascended back to heaven and uh, we know that there is a time when he is going to come again there is um, uh, the end times that is going to happen when uh, jesus will come again he will be revealed from heaven he will come with his saints and he will overthrow all the rulers the kings uh, along with antichrist and all the nations that support him and uh, he will put an end to every rule and reign and authority here on the earth and he himself will establish his kingdom here on the earth and uh, his kingdom and his rule will be according to the will of his um, father okay and we know that uh, we as his people as his believers his saints shall possess his kingdom so you know sometimes we when we um, when we are ministering hard laboring hard um, in God's uh, vineyard, in his kingdom. And, you know, um, we look at uh, people who are martyred, who are persecuted, um, and we think there is no justice. What is the end for, you know, the life that they live, for the way that they have labored uh, in love, in God's kingdom, the way they have ministered? You know, they are not acknowledged, appreciated. Nobody knows them. Uh, such hard labor that they have done, being faithful in the kingdom of God. But all of our labor is not in vain because in the physical or the little aspect of the kingdom, you know, the saints will rule and reign and will administer in God's kingdom um, or in his government, okay? So how faithful you have been to what God has entrusted you, to what he has committed to you, um, you know, how you have been uh, able to be good stewards of uh, building his kingdom and following his kingdom mandate and establishing his kingdom mandate with uh, uh, would be uh, a crown or would be a place of position for you in uh, the little aspect of the kingdom when you would be you know placed in important places of uh, responsibility uh, uh, authority government in god's literal uh, kingdom so we see that in the 
in the in the little aspect of the kingdom all of these passages given here you can read it later on that uh, the saints of the most high will be responsible in executing his uh, uh, earthly kingdom and then finally after the millennium rule you know the thousand year millennium rule will culminate in the final great white throne judgment that is described for us in revelation chapter 20 verses 11 to 15 okay so that is when we would literally uh, live with him uh, in heaven but before that we would be part of his thousand year uh, uh, physical kingdom here on the earth in jerusalem okay any questions anyone has i just very briefly run through this you'll uh, you know receive much of uh, you know, the end time events, eschatological events, uh, uh, eschatology in the course, you will study that in detail. And I think Pastor Ashish will be teaching that. So you would learn things very much in detail. Any questions anyone has? We just have one minute before our break or oh, it's time. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll end here. We'll go for our break and come back. And then maybe if you have any questions, we'll take it on or we'll go on to our last chapter. Thank you, everyone. See you after the break.